Okay, so we're talking about the quiz that's tomorrow. And for them, those of you who missed it or who aren't here, this is the type of questions to study for the quiz tomorrow. And we're talking about these two right here, okay? So we're I got gave them a separate sheet of paper. I'll put it online if you want to have access to it too. And we're gonna start on these. Okay. All right, you guys. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay, do you want to start on domains or do you want to start on the funny graph? Uh, the funny graph. Yeah. Funny graph. Okay, let's do domain arrange with this funny graph. What's my what are my um x's? What's the smallest x you see? Uh, negative seven. Negative seven. And what's the biggest x you see? Uh, eight. eight. Am I going to parentheses or bracket those? Bracket. 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 Very good. I've got solid points there. What about my range? What about my x and y? Personally, I was in a good mood. And I was late. And now you're even later. No excuse. Just don't talk. Thank you. What's my range? What's my lowest y? Negative two. Negative two. What's my biggest y? Five. Five. Perfect. Brackets, parentheses. Brackets. Brackets. Very good. Okay, so we do a really nice job with that. Let's go on to our increasing and decreasing intervals, okay? I like to start by identifying all of them first, and then I'll go write them out. So let's start as we go across the page. What am I doing first? When I first start on the far left side, am I increasing, decreasing, or staying the same? Decreasing. Decreasing, good. I decrease, decrease until right about here. What point is that? Five, negative two. Negative five, negative two, and I only care about the x's. So this is something on your homework I might have wrote x, not y, because I want the x value only. After I hit negative five, what do I do? Go back up. Go back up until when? Uh, negative two. Negative two, positive two, right? And again, I only care about that x. After I hit negative two, do I go up, down, or stay the same? same. Stay the same. Do I ask you about any intervals of constant? No. Any constant intervals? No, so you can really just ignore that part. We don't need it. When does it stop being constant? Two. Two? And then what's it doing at two? Increasing. Increasing until when? Five. Five. And then it's doing what until the end? Decreasing. Decreasing until the end. And the end, you told me, was at eight. So we started at negative seven, we ended at eight. So my areas of increasing are those two green areas, okay? So we'll go negative five to negative two. Remember, I told you that we should use parentheses. I will not mark you off for brackets on increasing or decreasing, but the correct way is to do parentheses. And then we'll union our other interval of increasing, which goes from two to five. If you didn't get these numbers, and let's maybe say you had negative two. Oh, sorry, this should be five and negative two. Let's say maybe you had negative two and then positive two. You did the Y, so make sure we're inter our intervals are X's only. Also, every year somebody forgets that it's not like the ordered pair. Someone will write, well, from five, negative two, and then to negative two, positive two. Like those are ordered pairs. Those are not interval notation. So and when I say intervals, I'm expecting this to not be an X and a Y. I'm expecting it to be an X to another X that we're increasing. Does that all make sense? I don't want to confuse you guys more, but I'm trying to find common mistakes so we don't have to do it again. All right, what are my intervals for decreasing then? Negative five. Good, negative five. And then one again? Five to eight. Five to eight, very good. All right, and then last, um, I've got local max and local min. What's the highest point that you see on this graph? Five, five, five right? Do you see any other points that are high compared to the points around them? I can think of one more. What's another point that's higher of all the points around it? Not negative two, because it stays constant right here. So it's the same. Negative seven. This point, if I kind of just look at one little area, if I just look at like this little part of the graph, it's higher than all the points around it. So that counts as a local min, a local max. So we'll say five, five is my absolute, my global max. And then negative seven, zero is a local. Since I asked for local, I'm asking for all of the ones that are higher, highest of all the ones around it. Nothing around negative seven, zero is higher than it. So we got to keep it. 
Now we gotta, gotta do our local mins. What's this lowest point on the graph? What's my absolute min? Negative five, negative two. Negative five, negative two, very good. And then do you see another point that's lower than the points around it? Eight, one, good, that one counts as well. And if you want to, you can think of these two as our absolute, and then these two are just our locals. They're just of the ones around it, not necessarily the entire graph. All right, let's go ahead and flip our paper over. Let's do some domains, shall we? Hi, this. Okay, on here, I've got some red flags that we gotta deal with. What's the red flag you see in this first one? Square root. What's the problem with the square root? Or what do I need under a square root? Greater than or equal to zero. So what's under the square root must be greater than or equal to zero. You can only have positive under the square root. So I set it greater than or equal to zero. So I minus two from both sides and X is greater than or equal to negative two. Now you may not want or need a number line on ones that are pretty easy like this, but in case you do, I will draw one. And then what's my interval gonna be here for my domain? Perfect. Bracket negative two infinity to um, parentheses. What about on the second one? Do you see any red flags there? No. Nope. So what's my domain if I don't have any red flags? Good, negative infinity to a positive infinity. Perfect. What about on the third one? You see any red flags there? Fraction. What can we not have with the fraction? What part? The denominator, the bottom. Now, a couple of us on our homework, if it was just like x plus one on top, you then set that not equal to zero or greater than or equal to zero. Anything in the numerator is okay. So the numerator is fine unless it's a square root. So if it's a square root, then I've got a red flag. But if it's just a normal numerator, you don't have to do anything to it. So in this one, x cannot equal negative four. And again, you maybe don't need a number line for this one, but I'm gonna do one for all of them. So I'll just keep my pattern going. What's my interval? What's my domain here? Good. Good. Parentheses, parentheses, parentheses. Okay. All right. Now these last two look really similar, right? Because they've got both the red flags. Bless you. I don't care which one you deal with first. We just got to deal with one. We got to deal with the other and then kind of see how they overlap with each other. So let's do the... Um, the fraction part first. What's what's the problem with the fraction? What I can, what can I not have? Good, equal to zero in the denominator. So x cannot equal negative three. And then what's wrong with the radical? Good, I gotta set it greater than or equal to zero. Got that square root on top, I can't have any negative. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative five. Now, while on all the other ones, you probably were able to just figure out what the interval was, I do encourage a number line for this one to kind of see how they go with each other. And I'm doing separate colors, and you maybe don't have separate colors, but I would kind of show a difference between them. So I did my radical, x must be greater than or equal to negative five. Now to do my three, I can go anywhere but negative three. So I just open circled negative three. Bless you. Now, my colors, you could have been able to tell even if they were on top of each other, but if you just do pencil, you maybe can't tell when they're on top of each other, which is why I staggered them. So now I can really easily see that this is where they're connected. This is where they're the same. This is where they're the same. So those are the two intervals I want. What am I going to write as my domain here? Uh, bracket, negative five, negative three. Parentheses or bracket? Oh, parentheses. And then union, negative three. Parentheses, brackets, what's going on here? Parentheses. On both. Awesome, good job. All right, let's do the same idea on this last one. Let's do it with our denominator. Sometimes we panic with the square. I just, I set the x squared by itself and then I square root both sides and I have to remember that it's a positive four and it's a negative four. And then my numerator is just x under the radical, so I didn't even have to really solve anything out. It's just greater than or equal to zero. So when I do my number line, I have problems with 
negative four, zero, and positive four. So I'm gonna open circle at negative four and at positive four, but I can do everything but those two numbers. And then I'm going to close circle at zero and then I can do everything greater. I was worried that it was gonna be a lot more complicated, but because zero comes in between those two numbers, then all I care about are these two intervals, this one right here and this one right here. Who can tell me what those are? Zero, four, bracket, both parentheses, and then, or wait, no, bracket through zero. And then uh, union, uh, parentheses, four, and then. Are we feeling okay on those? These last two are the hardest ones, but I promise you're gonna see one like that on the quiz tomorrow. So just gotta make sure that we're ready for it. Okay. So in addition to these types of problems that we just practiced, that we just saw, you also have those homework problems. So if you go back to your 1.2 homework, number two and three are like the ones that we just did up here. And then number um, on 1.1, number one and number two, Number one was that, and I can pull it up really quick just so you can see what I'm talking about. You have your homework, so you should be able to look at it. But number one was the one where I gave you an equation or a table and you had to find the equation of best fit. So you got to remember how to put those numbers into the calculator and either do linear or quadratic regression. And then number two, I think is pretty basic. It's where I just give you an equation. I say solve with the calculator. All we have to do is graph the two lines and find their point of intersection. It should be really simple, but sometimes we still mess it up. So I just really want to ensure that we can do that. What's our answer for like one like that? Just the x value. Yes. I think I gave you my homework one day. I think I gave everybody their homework back. I passed out one point one days. I think I don't think I passed out any one point ones today. All right, so go ahead and put that aside. We're going to get into our notes. We're going to do a little bit with our graphing calculator for the last few minutes of class. Um, and then that'll be it. Nothing, nothing that we did um, yesterday or today besides like the extra review will be on the quiz. So none of 1.3 and just those problems that I showed you on the board. We actually need to finish this little part right here. I asked you to have your end behaviors finished. I'm not going to come check those, but I asked that you had those done for today. And we so we didn't get to GNH before we left yesterday. So I want us to go back to our BFFs and look and see which four functions don't have the end behavior. Um, as X approaches positive infinity, my function approaches positive infinity. And then we'll find the three that don't that have the end behavior of as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. So let's go back and look at our end behaviors again. We did most of those, if not all of them, in class. Um, also, just a quick little talk about the limit behavior. If slash one I put limit stuff on your quiz or test, I will give you the beginning part, and then you'll have to tell me this part. And so if you remember that this is just like as X approaches something, this is what my Y is approaching. All you'll have to do is fill in this box right here. You won't have to produce the limit notation on your, on your own, okay? You won't have to produce the limit notation on your own. So let's go look at our graphs. Which ones do not have an end behavior of as X approaches positive infinity, Y also approaches positive infinity? What does not have that end behavior? Um, Think you got one? Logistic. logistic does not. Very good. What does it approach? It approaches one. So if you remember, our logistic graph gets closer and closer to one. It doesn't go to positive infinity. What's another one that doesn't approach positive infinity as X does? Reciprocal does not. What does it approach? Zero. Mm 
last two are very similar. Sin sin very good. Sine and cosine. Because sine and cosine stay in between one and negative one. They just wave, 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 wave. They do not go to positive infinity. All right, what about the three functions with end behavior as x approaches negative infinity, y also approaches negative infinity? So the left side, so all of these other ones, we were looking for ones that do not end high. Now I want the three that do start low and then increase as we go across the page. Natural. Which three start low? Natural log doesn't work because it's not, x is not negative infinity. x is bigger than zero. Exponential is not, it gets closer and closer to zero. Not negative infinity. Cubing. Cubing. What else? Identity. The last one. Great example. No, none of this, this like number two stuff, this I will never like test you on. It was just more of us reading the graph, which I think is what was helpful in what you were just working on, right? So it's just us kind of looking at the graph and knowing what the properties of the graph are and how to read it. Now, since we have our graphing calculator tomorrow, we might as well start using it a little bit today. We're going to graph these equations in and then just identify domain and range. I think this is more of just reading the graph. So we'll get our graphing calculators out. We're going to read the graph. We'll all put x squared minus 5. You should just be on a standard window of negative 10 to positive 10 in all directions. Based on our um, transformations, though, this should be easy stuff to do and to know because we already kind of practiced this. What's my domain for this graph going to be? Negative to positive infinity, good. Negative infinity to positive infinity. What about my range? Good, where do you get negative five from? I mean, your D. Uh, technically it's the D, because it's being attached to the end, but it is what moves us up and down. Yeah. If you didn't know what that point was, you could go second trace and you could calculate the minimum point. It's not hard to find that, but since we've done all of our transformations, you should already know that that's going to be at negative five. Am I going to bracket or parentheses at negative five? Bracket. Very good. Bracket. All right, let's look at the next one. This one says ln of x plus six. So let's make sure we know where ln is. Where's ln? Under log. Under log. ln is right here. It's on my left side, a couple from the bottom. Everyone see ln on their graph? On their a calculator and then x plus six. Keep that all inside the parentheses and then we graph it. Ooh, it looks like it stops, but we know logs or natural logs don't stop. What is that actually showing me? What's actually happening there where it looks like it stops? An asymptote. Where's that asymptote at? Uh, x equals, x equals yeah. negative six. And so we're getting closer and closer and closer to that, but not quite hitting it. So that being said, what's my domain? Negative six times. Good. Is it going to be parentheses or bracket at that negative six? Good. That asymptote means we don't have a point there. What about my range? Good. Positive to negative infinity. Why don't your graphing calculator at all? Because the graphing calculator has a hard time showing that we are approaching something, not actually hitting it. Do I end in 20 seconds? Okay. We will finish this and we have to do piecewise tomorrow um, after our quiz. Um, so come prepared with your calculator and come prepared knowing what to do. You won't get an infinite time on the quiz, kind of like we spent on that worksheet. It'll be like a 20 minute quiz. It'll be in and out. So if you don't know how to do that stuff, it's going to be hard. Okay. Say what? You, your homework is to study. Homework is to study. Thank you.